We're here talking about 3i Atlas, that interstellar object that has consumed our thoughts since really July. New observations of 3i Atlas just came in, and they show something unexpected. The anti-tail changed direction. For five months, this comet has been showing an anti-tail pointing toward the sun. That's already weird. Normal comet tails point away from the sun. This one pointed the wrong way, and it stayed that way. Consistent, month after month. Until now, the latest images show the anti-tail shifting, changing orientation, moving to a different angle as the comet gets closer to Earth. And astronomers weren't expecting this. Let's start with what we're actually seeing. The anti-tail has been visible since July, first spotted in Hubble images when the comet was approaching the Sun. It showed up as a spike of light pointing sunward, about 60,000 kilometers long, extending from the nucleus directly toward the Sun. To put that distance in perspective, 60,000 kilometers is about five times the diameter of Earth. It's enormous. This isn't a small feature. It's a major structure extending from the comet. That was unusual, but what made it really strange was that it didn't go away. Most of the time when you see something that looks like an anti-tail, it's a perspective effect. You're looking at the comet's normal dust tail from a specific angle, edge on. The tail curves away from the sun like it's supposed to. But from Earth, the curve makes it look like part of the tail is pointing toward the sun. Think of it like looking at a curved road from a distance. If you're at the right angle, the curve can make it look like the road is going two directions at once. Same thing with comet tails. The dust follows a curved path, but from Earth at certain angles, part of that curve appears to point the wrong way. This effect only lasts a few days, maybe a week. It happens when Earth crosses the comet's orbital plane. The viewing angle changes quickly. The anti-tail disappears. The illusion breaks. Problem solved. 3i Atlas didn't do that. The anti-tail stayed. July, August, September, October, November. Five months of consistent observation showing the same structure, always pointing toward the sun, never going away, never revealing itself as an illusion. Thousands of amateur astronomers photographed it. Professional telescopes imaged it. Observers in different countries, different latitudes, different viewing angles. Everyone saw the same thing. This wasn't a perspective trick. This was real structure, real material extending sunward. Now, here's what changed. New observations as the comet approaches perigee show the anti-tail at a different angle. It's still there, still pointing generally sunward, but the orientation has shifted. The exact direction has changed. Think of it like a clock hand. If the anti-tail was pointing at 12 o'clock before, it's now pointing at 1 o'clock or 11 o'clock. The exact angle depends on when you observe it, but the key point is it's not in the same position anymore. The structure itself looks similar, still about the same length, still bright enough to see clearly in images, still extending from the nucleus, but rotated, shifted, oriented differently relative to the sun's direction. This is significant for two reasons. First, it rules out some explanations. If the anti-tail were caused by something fixed to the nucleus, it would rotate with the comet. We know the comet is tumbling with a 16-hour rotation period. But the anti-tail isn't just rotating with that pattern. It's showing a different kind of movement, a shift that happens over days or weeks, not hours. Second, it gives us new data about what's causing this. The direction change tells us something about the physics involved, about the forces acting on whatever material is creating the anti-tail, about how that material responds to changes in the comet's position relative to the Sun and Earth. And that's exactly what scientists need. More data, more observations, more pieces of the puzzle. Because five months of watching a stable anti-tail didn't solve the mystery. But watching it change? That might. There are two main theories for what causes the anti-tail, and this direction change affects both of them differently. Theory number one, evaporating ice particles. This theory says the anti-tail is sunlight reflecting off tiny ice grains, really tiny, smaller than the width of a human hair, microscopic particles that behave differently than larger dust. Here's how it would work. The comet releases particles, normal comet behavior, Gas sublimates from the surface. 
that gas carries dust with it. The dust particles range in size from large grains down to tiny specks. Most of those particles are big enough that radiation pressure pushes them away from the sun. Sunlight isn't just light, it carries momentum. When photons hit a particle, they give it a tiny push. For small particles, that push is stronger than the sun's gravity. The particle accelerates away from the sun. That creates the normal tail, the one that points away like it's supposed to. The smaller the particle, the stronger this effect. A dust grain one micrometer across gets pushed harder than a grain 10 micrometers across. Surface area to mass ratio matters. Smaller particles have more surface area relative to their mass, so they feel radiation pressure more strongly. But some particles are incredibly small. Dust mixed with ice. These particles are so small they don't last long. They sublimate fast. The ice turns directly from solid to gas. The particle evaporates. It goes from being a solid particle to being molecules of gas. This happens quickly, maybe in seconds or minutes, before radiation pressure can push the particle very far, before it can accelerate away from the sun. The particle evaporates in place, right where it formed. And while it's evaporating, it scatters sunlight. The tiny ice crystals reflect photons in all directions. Some of those photons head toward Earth. We see them as a glow, a brightness around the comet. If this is happening on the sunward side of the coma, you'd see a glow extending toward the sun. New particles are constantly being released. They immediately start evaporating. They create a transient cloud of scattering particles. That cloud glows, and from Earth it looks like an anti-tail. This theory was proposed early on. It's been seen with other comets at smaller scales. Comet Hale-Bopp showed a faint sunward glow near perihelion, explained by this same mechanism. Small icy particles evaporating before radiation pressure could push them away. The question is whether this mechanism can create a 60,000 kilometer structure that lasts for months. That's much larger and longer lasting than what we've seen with other comets. But 3i Atlas is unusual in other ways too. The high methanol production, the unusual chemistry, Maybe it's producing these tiny particles at a higher rate than normal comets. Now, what happens when the viewing angle changes? When the comet's position relative to Earth shifts? The glow would look different, not because the physics changed, but because you're looking at it from a different angle. Like how the Moon looks different depending on where Earth is in its orbit. Same object, different perspective. So if the anti-tail is made of evaporating particles, a direction change makes sense. As the comet moves closer to Earth, our viewing angle changes. The anti-tail is still there, still in the same physical location relative to the Sun. But from Earth, it appears to shift direction. This supports Theory 1. The direction change fits the evaporating particle model. Theory number 2. Swarm of objects lagging behind. This theory is more exotic. It says the anti-tail isn't part of the comet at all. It's a swarm of smaller objects trailing behind the main nucleus. Fragments, pieces, a cloud of debris. Here's the idea. 3i Atlas shows non-gravitational acceleration. That means jets are pushing it. The gas escaping from the surface creates thrust, like a natural rocket engine. This thrust gives the comet a tiny push, makes it move slightly faster than gravity alone would explain. We know this is happening because the orbit doesn't quite match pure gravitational predictions. There's a small discrepancy, a deviation that can only be explained by outgassing creating thrust. This is normal for comets. Most active comets show non-gravitational acceleration to some degree. But what if the comet isn't one solid object? What if it's a main nucleus plus a lot of fragments? A loose collection held together by weak gravity or not even held together at all? This happens sometimes. Comets break apart. We've watched it happen. Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 broke into pieces before hitting Jupiter. Comet 73P, schwassmann wachmann fragmented into dozens of pieces. Comet Ison disintegrated near the Sun. Breaking up is part of the comet life cycle. Maybe 3i Atlas broke apart at some point. Maybe billions of years ago, when it was first ejected from its home system. Maybe more recently. Maybe it's been shedding fragments continuously during its journey through interstellar space. Either way, you end up with a main nucleus and a lot of smaller pieces. The main nucleus has active jets. It gets pushed by outgassing. It accelerates. 
The fragments either have no jets or much weaker jets. They don't get the same push. They lag behind. Gravity is pulling everything in the same direction, but the main nucleus has that extra push from its jets. It moves ahead. The fragments fall back relative to the main nucleus. They create a trail of objects extending behind the direction of motion. Now, 3 I Atlas was moving toward the Sun during the first half of its visit, from July through October. The direction of motion was sunward, approaching perihelion, falling toward the Sun. So a trail of lagging objects would extend sunward, away from the direction of motion, creating what looks like an anti-tail pointing toward the Sun. Avi Loeb published a paper proposing this in December. He ran the calculations, worked out the numbers, a trillion fragments with a combined surface area a hundred times larger than the main nucleus could produce the brightness we see. The fragments would be spread across about 60,000 kilometers, matching the observed anti-tail length. A trillion sounds like a lot, but these would be small objects. Pebbles, grains, chunks of ice and rock ranging from millimeters to meters across. The total mass wouldn't be huge, just spread out over a large volume and they'd be reflecting sunlight. That's what makes them visible, just like the main nucleus reflects sunlight to become visible. A cloud of fragments would do the same. The combined brightness of all those fragments creates the glow we see as the anti-tail. It's speculative, but it fits some observations, especially the persistence. A swarm of physical objects doesn't evaporate. It stays visible as long as the objects reflect sunlight. But here's the problem with a direction change. If the anti-tail is a swarm of objects lagging behind due to the main nucleus's acceleration, the swarm's position depends on the direction of motion. As the comet's trajectory curves around the sun, the direction of motion changes. The swarm would shift position accordingly. So a direction change could fit theory two as well. The comet's path is curving as it swings past the sun and heads back out. The direction of non-gravitational acceleration is changing. The swarm's position relative to the nucleus would shift. This also supports theory two. The direction change fits the lagging swarm model. So we're back to both theories being viable. The direction change doesn't eliminate either one. It's consistent with both, but it does tell us something important. Whatever is causing the anti-tail is responding to changes in geometry, either changes in viewing angle or changes in the comet's trajectory. The anti-tail isn't static, it's dynamic. It's evolving as the comet moves. And that's useful information, because it means careful observations during perigee might finally distinguish between these theories. The comet is approaching its closest point to Earth, perigee. The distance will be about 269 million kilometers. That's still far, but it's as close as it gets. And this is our best chance to solve the anti-tail mystery. Here's why distance matters. The closer an object is, the more light we collect. Telescopes can see fainter details. Spectroscopy gets better signal. Images resolve finer structure. A comet at perigee is much easier to study than the same comet twice as far away. Professional telescopes are pointed at 3I Atlas right now. Hubble is observing. Webb is scheduled. Ground-based observatories around the world are tracking it. They're collecting every photon they can. They're looking for specific things in the anti-tail. First, precise measurements of the brightness distribution. Is the glow uniform or are there bright spots, clumps, structure within the anti-tail that would suggest physical objects rather than diffuse gas? Second, spectroscopy. What wavelengths of light are coming from the anti-tail? If it's scattered sunlight from particles, the spectrum should match reflected solar light. If there's emission from sublimating gas, the spectrum would show specific molecular lines. Third, polarization. Light scattered by particles has a specific polarization signature. By measuring the polarization of the anti-tail's light, Astronomers can determine the size and composition of whatever is producing the glow. Fourth, time-resolved observations. Watching how the anti-tail changes hour by hour and day by day. If it's tied to the comet's rotation, it would vary with the 16-hour rotation period. If it's independent of rotation, that tells us something different. Fifth, the direction change itself. Tracking exactly how the anti-tail's orientation shifts 
as the comet moves, comparing that to models of viewing geometry and trajectory changes, seeing which model matches the observations better. All of this requires good data, clear skies, long observation runs, multiple telescopes working together, and time, which is running out. The comet is moving fast. After perigee, it starts getting farther away again. The signal weakens, the images get noisier, the spectroscopy becomes harder. By early next year, it'll be too faint for detailed study. And then it's gone, forever. This object is on a hyperbolic trajectory. It's leaving the solar system. It's not coming back. This is a one-time opportunity. The anti-tail has been a puzzle for five months. It's been stable. It's been visible. It's been consistent. And it's been unexplained. Astronomers have proposed theories, models, calculations, but theories need data to test them. Now the anti-tail is changing. That's new data. That's new information. That's a new way to test which theory is correct, but only if we gather the observations while we still can. Only if telescopes capture the measurements before the comet fades. Only if we don't miss this window. Amateur astronomers are contributing too. Thousands of people with backyard telescopes are imaging the comet, taking photos, measuring positions, tracking brightness, documenting changes over time. All of this data gets compiled, analyzed, published, and it adds to the professional observations. This is how citizen science works in astronomy. Professional telescopes are expensive. Time on them is precious. Scheduled months in advance, allocated carefully. You can't just point Hubble at something on a whim. Every observation has to be justified, approved, planned, but amateur astronomers own their equipment. They can observe whenever they want, whenever the weather cooperates. Whenever the comet is visible from their location, they provide flexibility that professional observations can't match. Citizen science matters here. Professional telescopes can't watch the comet continuously. They have other targets, other projects, limited time. But amateur astronomers around the world can fill in the gaps. They can provide continuous monitoring. They can catch changes that happen between professional observation runs. They can notice things that happen at unexpected times. If you have a telescope and dark skies, you can contribute. Image the comet. Measure the anti-tail. Share your observations. Astronomy forums compile amateur data. Websites track brightness reports. Your observation might be the one that catches an important change. Because the anti-tail changing direction is significant, it's giving us information. It's helping us understand what's happening. But we need to track it carefully. We need to see exactly how it changes. We need to connect those changes to the comet's position and motion. And we need to do it now, while the comet is still close enough, while the observations are still clear enough, while the data is still good enough. This is the closing window. The final chance to study the anti-tail before it's out of reach. The perigee observations are critical. They're the best data we're going to get. They're what will determine whether we solve this mystery or leave it unsolved. After this, the comet fades. The anti-tail becomes harder to see. The measurements become less precise. The opportunity closes, and we're left with whatever we manage to learn in these final weeks. The anti-tail has been pointing toward the sun for five months. Stable, persistent, unexplained. Now it's changing direction, shifting as the comet approaches Earth, giving us new data, new clues, new ways to test the theories. But the window is closing. The comet is at its closest now. The observations happening right now are the best we'll get. After this, it fades. It leaves. It's gone forever. So the anti-tail mystery might finally get solved. Or it might stay a mystery. It depends on what the data shows, what the telescopes capture, what the measurements reveal. Subscribe because we'll cover whatever they find, whatever the observations show, whatever answers emerge in these final observations. The anti-tail just got stranger, and we're about to find out why.